Alex, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I've wanted to talk to you ever since this war in Ukraine started, and particularly so since you came and joined my club, Arsenal, which I've supported all my life. Because to watch a player like you having to go on a football pitch twice a week with all that's going on back in your home country shows me that you must have incredible mental strength. How difficult has it been for you? Well, um, thanks a lot uh, for this invitation. It's a, it's a really pleasure to talk to you. And um, I tell you honestly, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll try to be honest. Um, it was not easy, you know, to adapt on this. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, all of us, I'm talking about football players and which is playing abroad, um, it's not easy, you know, to be, to be far away from the home and then watching all these scary things which is happening. But um, I remember quite well the um, first couple of weeks that I just lost my head. I, I, I didn't know where I am. I, I didn't know where I'm driving to to, 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 to the training ground or where. I didn't know, honestly. I was like in this space. Mm. I couldn't believe that, that this has happened. And, uh, but in the end, you know, uh, there is two options. You just keep being in the space or you have to do your best to help, to help your country, to help Ukrainian people um, as much as you can. You have to represent your country in the best way you could. So that, 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 this is the conversation was between all of us, broad players, which is playing for the national team. And uh, obviously, that was my uh, my decision to to carry on, to, to 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 do my best, and to help as much as I can. Because I know that I'm well, will be much much more helpful to my country and to the people from here rather than being there. But I really want to be there. When did you know that Russia had invaded your country? Well, it was a deep night. I was sleeping because I had session in the morning, and my wife uh, suddenly woke me up. And she said, it started. I said, what started? She was crying, you know, like full in tears. And I was like, what started? What's wrong? And she just showed me the, the videos, the pictures uh, of, of this invasion. So that's how it all started. And that's how I, obviously, you know, if you look at the bit back, um, the, 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 look, let me, let me, let me be clear. Some, some of the people still think or they still talk that this is a conflict between two countries, but this is not conflict. This is a proper war, mm. right? And this war started in 2014 mm. when I was like 17 or something, right? And I, didn't, I couldn't even understand what, what's, what's going on. And uh, they took Crimea and Donbass without any resistance. And you were playing at Shakhtar Donetsk yeah. at the time, and you couldn't play, right? Well, uh, all Shakhtar moved to the other city, but uh, I had another story, football story, which we can speak later mm -hmm. a bit, but I'm talking about just the, the general invasion. And uh, they took Crimea and Donbass without any resistance in 2014, and no one, no one uh, could understand mm -hmm. what's obviously happened. Um, and then obviously in 2022, um, since the, the main invasion across the whole Ukraine, it's scary, to be honest, it's scary. I still cannot understand for what, to achieve what. I mean, it was terrifying to watch it, and I'm not Ukrainian. I can't even imagine what it must have been like for you and your family to watch your country being illegally invaded and in such a brutal, barbaric manner, where very quickly Russian forces were committing atrocities, war crimes. You know, I went to Bukha when I went to, to Ukraine and heard some of the stories there of the appalling massacre there. To actually be Ukrainian and watch these scenes must have been an appalling thing. Imagine the place where you was born and raised. You know every single stone there. You know everything around yourself. You know the people around yourself. You have some, some friends, I don't know job and then one day someone from the other countries with the guns coming there destroying everything around raping your i don't know your woman kids killing men 
and then living stealing everything around everything what you achieve what you i don't know what you bought before for no reason you reckon in 2022 this is possible i don't i don't know but it is and you know using this kind of opportunities to even to talk to you uh, I would like to, to, to send another message to the rest of the world. I know some people have got fatigue. I know this. Um, but why it's so important to keep going, to keep pushing, to, to stick to, to be to be together, to stick together and to win this uh, terrorist invasion. It's so important because today Ukraine is a shield for all the Europe. And you never know. Today is Ukraine, but tomorrow it could be I your completely country. agree. It could be your country. It could be any country. Exactly. And also, this is for the future. Like, if one guy is going to sit in his office and going to think, well, I have enough power to take this land, this land, this mm -hmm. land, he must to know from the experience in the past, all the world is going to stick together and it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So... That's what we have to do, that, what are your, in my opinion. What are your thoughts about Vladimir Putin? I don't want to even say his name. I don't want to even say his name or to talk about him. It's incredible, honestly. Just yesterday I, I watched, um, because I'm following all the news, and I watched a short clip of his video when he was talking to someone uh, sitting on the table. I don't know even these people who was there around. It's like young men and, and, and girls. Um, and he was talking about... Kachovka Dam, which they mm. destroyed one week ago. And he was saying that, obviously, Ukraine did it. Well, 100,000 of people lost their houses. Some of them didn't survive. Um, there, there was one zoo, 300 animals died. And everyone is, was talking about Ukrainian... Uh, Ukrainian counterattack. I'm talking about army. And then he was saying in the video, he was saying Ukraine did it because they were planning to do counterattack. And then this dam makes them so slow, slower. And it, like you're just trying to put it in your head. Well, you are uh, Ukrainian army. You want to do counterattack, and you destroying dam. To makes your counterattack slower. Makes no sense. And he's just saying this. I, I was like watching. No, no, I need to watch it again. Maybe I didn't hear properly. So he's lying to to himself. He did. Mm. I, I don't know. I I know that there is a, a proper propaganda. I know because I had experience to playing there, but I never followed the news or whatever. But honestly, like if I had some circle when I was playing there, now this circle became to zero. Because I don't understand people. But I was going to ask you, you went and played in the Russian Premier League for... One and a half season. Yeah. Um, and you did that because of what was happening in the Donbass and your family moved to Russia. And you're Russian speaking, of course. You must have made lots of friends in Russia. Are any of these people still friends of yours? Or have you not, had to... Not a lot, to be honest. Not a lot. Um, well, I know that I had this experience in my life, right? Um, but and some of the people from Ukraine they don't they don't like it obviously and um, to be honest at the moment me too right but but um, I'm human being and I understand one thing that I would like to say uh, again thanks to FC Ufa mm. for everything what they have done the Russian team that you yeah played. where I played yeah but that's it that obviously that's it mm. for, I, I I would like to say that thanks. To, th the, to them that they uh, took that risk because I had a tough situation between me and Shakhtar Donetsk. And uh, they took that risk. They signed me without any views. So I never played on the professional level and they took me. Um, and then obviously with that opportunity, I signed the contract with City. But that's it. That's the only thing to FC Ufa for, for everything what they have done to me. The rest, obviously, the reaction afterwards since, since invasion, not from the clubs, any Russian clubs, not from the football players. Mm -hmm. I, I never seen that, and I would never understand. 
I had a chat with one of the, not one of the, I would say, the, the famous one at the moment in Russia, sportsman, not from football, I'm not going to say his name, but he is very famous. I had chat with him, I like, because I unfollowed him on Instagram and he asked me, why did you do that? I said, listen, the, it's already since month, six, uh, three months since invasion, and you didn't even say anything. You have millions of followers. You didn't post even one picture to stop these scary things. Mm. I would never understand this because if, would, if, if this one would happen with Ukraine and Ukraine invade anyone else, I swear to God I will be the first one who's going to scream like to stop it and I would never come back. Are they scared for their lives? I don't know. He just saw the message. You can see that he saw the message, but he didn't reply. I mean, I guess a lot of them would say that they feel in fear of their lives because Putin has killed people who've stood up against him in this war. Well, I tell you, I'll give you another example. There was one player, ex-player. He used to play for Lokomotiv Dynamo Moscow. He used to be a captain for the Russian national team. Igor Denisov, his name. Mm. Um, he gave one interview. The way he was soaking, like how bravely it was, um, about, he just said, listen, if I would be a still player, current player, after 24th of February, I would retire. Really? Well, the way he was talking. And what's happened with him? I never, I didn't even hear anything to him. He is in prison. Or This is an example. This is a poor example. The guy with the big balls, talking in front of the people, in front of 140 or how many millions they have. Incredible stuff. And this is the normal reaction from normal people. But unfortunately, there is not many of them. Uh, We've seen some Ukrainian uh, athletes, sports people, now refusing to shake hands with either Russian or Belarusian uh, athletes. How do you feel about that? If you had to come up against a team that had a Russian player, would you shake their hand? No chance. No chance. Because I would never un accept uh, their reaction. Honestly. I have to be honest. Um, do you think it's cowardly, the, the lack of reaction? I th I'm totally agree with, with this reaction. He, 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 it's not even it's impossible. It's not. There's no point to even explain it. Um, the, the the things. Look, you can say well, but they didn't do anything against uh, us or something. Yes, they did. They did. How and what? They didn't react. Look, they have followers behind them, mm -hmm. millions of followers in social media or wherever. They have a lot of chances to to speak out to the people which is following them. And if you have, let's say, 10 million followers in Instagram and you post some, I don't know, one picture like stop it, just, you know, mm. black phone, stop it. Some people from these 10 million is going to follow you. Mm. They're going to spray this as well to someone else mm. and it will work in the end. But if no one is going to speak out because they're scared, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't, don't ever call us brothers or whatever like they did it in the past. Mm. Never again. That's my, that's my... Uh... Wimbledon Tennis, for example, has just said they will allow Russian and Belarusian players to play this year, having banned them before. Do you agree with that decision? No chance. You think they should just no be bar chance. barred I from don't agree. Sport? I don't agree. Well, that, I'm one of the, I have one of the Ukrainians which, is, uh, which, is, which don't like to see them in, in any, on the highest level in any sport. So they should just be... Exactly. And, and do you think both countries, Russia and Belarus? For sure, 100%. They shouldn't be allowed to compete? Shouldn't be allowed. Why? Because how many bombs and rockets have been sending from Belarus? How many? Listen, I'm not, uh, listen, I'm not political. No. I didn't understand anything about it. I don't understand. And I would never understand it because this is not my area. But this is not political. You, they are it's talking, life and death. This is war. And they're talking about don't put politics in sport. This is not politics. This is war. Guys, you don't do anything to be, I'm not saying on our side, on the justice side. Yeah? I, uh, do you know people who've lost their lives? Of course I know people. Friends of yours? Well, not like close, close friends, but yes, friends. The people you knew? People I knew. They've been killed? Yeah, killed. Destroyed by bombs. In their homes? Yeah. They didn't do anything like bad to them, but and they didn't deserve it. Do you spend your entire time just checking to see what's happening? Every single day. I don't know how many hours, honestly. Just what? Just, just watching 
in the morning, first what I what I do, I'm taking my phone and checking all the news. How does it make you feel? Like I said, unfortunately, unfortunately, we already get used to it, to this routine, and uh, we have to be we have to be strong. That's you it. you have family, of course, in Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, you must you must worry yourself sick about them well uh, of course I'm, I'm so worried about them and uh, i tell you what um, the mentality of people they don't want to leave they don't want to leave the country uh, even if they could um, this is their homeland and i would like for sure after football career i will be living in ukraine that's for sure one million percent because um, I didn't been there for two years, and now I was uh, I had trip there um, one week ago, and obviously the, the, as soon as I pass the border, it's just my homeland. It's just my place. I can't imagine what it's like, for example, to have your parents living in a country at war when you're here. How is that for you, sort of psychologically, to have to deal with that? Well, it's not easy. Um, it's not easy to, it, it was not easy from the beginning, um, but you know, when you already in this routine, you just, you're just getting used to it. And uh, the thing is, if you follow all the instructions in terms of siren and you hide yourself in the bunker, you're more or less safe, but you never know, because even last night, they destroyed, uh, they destroyed I don't know, one building in Odessa, three people died straight. Mm. So, I don't know, scary. You went back to Ukraine very recently, the first time you've been there since the war started. It's one thing to see video footage on the news or on social media. It's another to be there, to see the actual devastation. When I went to Kyiv last summer, to be, to be able to go to places like Bucha and see what had happened and to talk to people who'd been caught up in that, who'd lost loved ones, who'd been shelled, who'd had people they knew raped and murdered. I mean, it was horrific. What was it like for you as a Ukrainian to go back to your country and actually see it? Well, it's completely different when you see it from, the, from your phone or rather than from your eyes. Um, painful, you know? It's not like scary. Oh. Because I've seen it, every, I've seen it by, by by social medias and stuff. But it's so painful. It's so painful how people um, suffering, how people trying to survive, and I don't know. And, uh, it's just it's just a simple example um, that thanks to our president that he uh, made this. M made this happen, I mean, I'm talking about Ukrainian football and season is still there, um, obviously without funds. But as soon as the siren is there, you have to stop to playing football, you have to hide your, yourself in the bunker and then wait until siren is done. And instead of 90 minutes of the game, the game could be three hours. And uh, this is the reality, mm -hmm. you know. I was talking to the lads here and to the staff and one of the kid many years said to me, like, I used to say to my kids almost every single day that how lucky they are. Like, look at the people there. It's, it's so hard, you know, to carry on there and uh, to do your best to try to achieve something in these kind of facilities. Uh, but, well, we don't have another option. We just have to keep going. We have to, we have to be stronger. Um, obviously, I've been in the school which they destroyed. Mm -hmm. By the way, it, it's around 800 schools been destroyed by uh, Russian bombs. Uh, two, 220 of them is impossible to rebuild anymore. You just have to build the new, the new one. And the rest you can rebuild. But obviously all of them is kind of different kind of damage. And one of them we're going to rebuild using this charity game, which is coming in August. And I've seen all these damages, and um, I was talking to the kids, mm. which is study there, and listening the story from the stories from them. Then they, how kids can lie to you? It's impossible. They don't even know what lies. What, means. Was, what were they telling you? Like they were saying to me that Russian army uh, was coming to their houses, you know, stealing some stuff, 
doing scary things, which I'm not going to say here. It's scary. You know, like the proper mental injury for all of them, for all their lives. This is the most scary thing, I guess. You played with Andrei Shevchenko. You played a bit of football with some of these kids, just knock around. And that was a wonderful little moment, I guess, of escapism for them. And then, of course, you come back here and they carry on. They're living in this life day in, day out. Are you worried about the general impact on the mental health of all these Ukrainian kids? Well, even after after war, will be a lot of job to do, especially like mental job because this is a this is a proper injury, um, proper injury which they're gonna carry with them all their lives, and um, I don't know obviously how to solve all this all all these problems, but for sure there there will be we will find a way. Because even watching um, the office president, you know, where I've been, mm. um, the way people work, the energy, the passion. the It's incredible. Incredible. I went there. I interviewed President Zelensky last year and I thought, A, he was incredibly impressive. But you're right, everyone around them, they're working all day, every day, seven days a week, month after month, in incredibly difficult circumstances. But I do feel Zelensky is like Winston Churchill was for us in World War II. He's become this figurehead of resistance. Yeah, Is that how you felt? That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, that's why I'm saying that with this kind of people um, and with this president, uh, we have a bright future and we're going to find a way how, how to sort everything out. And uh, using that opportunity to talk to him personally, I just said, because listen, I had um, a bit like scenario what I had to say. Um, not a scenario I'm talking about. I knew what I have to say. I know that um, we don't have to waste his time and we have to be like straight, straight mm -hmm. in. Um, the idea was to, to explain him the charity match which is coming um, to help to rebuild one of the schools in Chernihiv region. And, uh, but before that, I, uh, using that opportunity, I said from myself and from my, all my family that how proud we are that you are our president. And everything what you are doing is incredible. So we are so proud, all of us. I mean, me and my circle. And uh, that's true. That's actually true. He became our, uh, our, our, our leader, like... As you can, you can imagine, since the invasion. Uh, well, that moment on the first night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he, I was trying to when say. When he did yeah. that video in his combats with guys around him and he said, I'm not going anywhere. That was powerful for me. That was the um, moment where the country looked to their leader and he was going to stay, even if it meant he died. And uh, this is about this story as well. When um, US president calling you and saying that, look, I know I have information that you ta target number one and your family target number mm. two. Please let me take you somewhere they, where they, where they will never find you. And he said, listen, I really appreciate everything what you are doing and stuff, but I don't need taxi. I need guns mm. and bullets. How you're not going to follow this, this president? How you're not going to, how you're not going to, I don't understand. So What's incredible about him is that he was, before all this, he was, you know, five years ago, he was a, a TV star. It's crazy to think that this guy who was just known on Ukrainian television for sort of light entertainment has become such an influential and inspiring wartime leader, isn't it? Well, um, yeah, it's incredible stuff, but uh, at the same time, I used to say, it doesn't matter what you have done in the past, it's so important who you are today and what are you doing today. So um, the job he's doing is, honestly, I have no words about this. Seeing that from inside, even don't understand a lot of things still, uh, but... People say he should do a deal. He should end the war, bring the peace by giving Russia some of the land they've taken. What do you feel about that? No chance. Listen, how many, imagine, imagine you lost someone from your circle and, uh, no, no, let's, let's, go, let's go to the beginning. I was born and raised knowing that Crimea is, and Donbass is Ukraine. 
Yeah, I spent five years of my life, the, the, most of the beautiful five years in my life in Donetsk. Amazing city, amazing. And then at, at some point, it's already Russian. How? For what? Do, do they have? Do they had? Uh, do they have the right to do that? Why we should give them? How many people already been killed? How many buildings was destroyed? And why we should give them? I don't understand. So you reckon you lost someone from your circle, and then in one day, uh, we're gonna do that, like you said, we're gonna give them land, and then you're gonna sit and, well, I lost one of my circle. For the reason, because we were fighting for that, and now you, you gave them like this? Just your reaction. Just w your feelings. Do you feel most Ukrainians feel this way, that they, they sure. shouldn't give an inch? For sure, 100%. I don't know why they're still uh, try, uh, sending uh, every single night bombs to Ukraine during the night from 1 a.m. Mm. till 5. You know, where you, when you sleep so, so deep. Obviously, why? Like, in my opinion, maybe I can be wrong. Like, to keep f people in fear. Yes. To, 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 let, to try to push people to go against our president, well, to let to us go against our president and to, to break stop. Them, to break the exactly, morale, right? To, yeah, exactly. So that's what they're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. And people living with that already more than one and a half year. Do you believe Ukraine can win the war? I don't believe. I know. I know we're going to win. We already won. Because they didn't expect what we're going to do. They didn't expect this. Maybe they thought, like they're saying, uh, for three days they do parrot, uh, parrot uh, in Kiev city center or what they were thinking. I don't know. See, it's impossible to give our uh, our homeland like like this, our place where we were born and raised. And to people who say, like you say, they've got they've got tired by it all, they got bored, if you like. What do you say about what Ukraine needs now in terms of firepower? Would you like to see? countries like the UK, who've been very good so far, but also the United States and other countries, do you want to see them give Ukraine more weaponry, give them more ability to win the war? I would love to see that. But in the same time, uh, what, I, what I know and what I, well, what I can see, uh, that they are giving uh, everything what they can. Uh, but of course, obviously, you never know, all of us, we would never know is it everything or is not everything? But still, I would, I would like to say, using this opportunity, I would like to say massive thanks for all the help around the world and support which we received and receiving every single day. And uh, I really appreciate that. I mean, many United Kingdom people have taken in Ukrainian families. Are you grateful uh, that they've done that? Well, uh, I'm so proud of this moment, honestly. Since the invasion started, um, the little kids used to come to me in the shop I was thinking, like, maybe they want to make picture or something. No, they, they came to me, like, saying, uh, Alex, we are praying for all your people and your country, and we hope it will finish very soon. So it means a lot for me, you know. It means people staying with us. How hard has it been to play football at an elite level? Arsenal were chasing the Premier League title this season, very nearly won it. How hard has it been for you to try and perform to the level that you're used to performing at with all this going on? Look, football is my life. This is the place um, where I feel most comfortable myself. And this is the place when I'm on the pitch, I just forget everything around myself. I'm just in the game, um, enjoying these moments. And uh, it's everything from your head, how you, how you behave, how you react on this, this, this. Sometimes I'm losing my head from the morning, straight away. Seeing the news all day, don't touch me, please. Does, yeah. it, make you, does it make you emotional? So much, so much. Uh, but now I guess I have no emotions at all inside. I'm completely empty because uh, I'm a sensitive person, to be honest. Um, and seeing all these scary things, I, I think I left, I left it all. And um, uh, you said it's hard or not hard. Uh, it's hard for the people which are staying on the forefront line, mm. taking their risk of their lives every single second. Having a babies at home, families, wives. It's, 
It's hard for them. You told a story, I think, about a woman who had two young children, babies, and when the dam was blown up, she died. And you had some knowledge of this woman, I think. Well, I, I read it in the social media, and then I asked a couple of people, a couple of volunteers, is it true or not? And they said, yes, unfortunately, it's, it's true. It's hard to read. It was so hard to read, and I couldn't even believe. I really didn't want to believe in that. And I was just thinking about this for two days, and then I was calling some, some of the people which is helping there in that region, and they said, unfortunately, it's true. Honestly, it's... It's, 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 it's so hard. I mean, just that image when I read that of this woman with these two babies and then the water was coming and she knew she was probably going to die with her kids. It's just, it's not just heartbreaking, it's enraging, isn't it? And the question is to achieve what? They done it for to achieve what? You know that in that region there is a lot of plants growing before it used to grow. And now when all water will go down, it's not going to grow anymore for a years. It's a big ecological catastrophe, massive. How you can describe them? You've got this massive game on August the 5th. You're going to play for Arsene Wenger, obviously the Arsenal managerial legend. And in fact, he nearly signed you a few years ago. So you finally get to play for him. Well, do you know this story or not? No, tell me. Well, um... I was 17 years old and I played, or 16 or 17, doesn't matter. Uh, we played champion, youth Champions League against Arsenal away. I don't know how it was, but the rules was, um, we, went out, we went through the group stage. Um, we became second. And the play, playoffs was playing from one game, not home and away. And because you became second, you had to play away game. And we played against Arsenal. Hector Bellerin team, mm. Serge Gnabry. Mm. Um, Akpon, these kind of players. Um, tough game, 1-1 one, one half time. Uh, we did well. Then in the beginning of the second half, we had incredible chance 1v1. We didn't score. And then they scored two quick goals and the game was over, 3-1. And uh, after a few weeks after that game, one of the agents called me and said, like, Alex, Arsene Wenger was on that game and he really wants you to take in the first team straight. I was like, well, I'm playing for Shakhtar Donetsk under 19, not even under 21. And he wants to take me in the first team of Arsenal. It's probably a joke. He said, no, 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 it's true, it's true. I said, well, if it's true, just make it happen, please. And then obviously I don't know what's actually happened uh, in the end, but the rumors went down to back to zero. And when I had chance and opportunity to ask him personally mm -hmm. if it's true or not, he, because he came one, to one of the games at Emirates the, uh, last season. Um, and he said, as soon as I started to speak, Mister, I want to ask you one question. I don't want to <laughs> waste your time. Is it true or not that when Shakhtar Donetsk used to play in the Champions League against Arsenal, as soon as I, he just stopped me and said, he told me that stadium. He told me the stadium where we were playing. I didn't even know the name. He said, yes, that stadium. I was there. After half time, I called. I said, it's true. I was like, wow. Imagine, imagine I had this, I had this opportunity to be there. Like did he explain 70. why he didn't sign you? Well, I didn't even ask this because uh, I know that um, you know all this process to 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 make a transfer is a big big job. So agents. And There's stuff. a kind of irony, isn't there, that you play for a team called Arsenal that's named after an ammunition factory. Ammunition factory. Sorry. The Gunners, Arsenal. That the, the name comes from a munitions factory. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's an irony there that you're well, now a Ukrainian well, yeah, 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 I've got you. playing for Arsenal, right? Which it's is a des symbol destiny, of, yeah. of defence and destiny, fighting yeah. back. Destiny. I don't know. I had a, obviously, I, 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 nobody could expect what's going to happen. But I always had a dream to play for this team. and uh, Not because of the amazing name of the club, but just because I really love to watch the way how they played. We're going to win the league next year, Alex? I hope so. We're going to do... I've been very upset for a few weeks now. Well, not only you, trust me. And all the team, we really feel it. And, um, you know, the energy from the fans from all around the world, not just Emirates or away stadiums, it was incredible. I never felt this in my life. And um, 
trust me, if, not if, every, every fan around the world is, is so disappointed and angry, trust me, all the players and stuff, five times more. Honestly, five times more. But like uh, we spoke about this, bef uh, about this before, uh, these scars will make us much, much stronger, that's mm -hmm. for sure. We will take the, the best from this. And this is amazing experience for us. We have a, uh, such a young team, but with a lot of experience already. And um, we will try our best in the next season too. Yeah, Bill Shankly, the great Liverpool manager, said football is not a matter of life and death. It's more important than that. But for you, of course, nobody needs to tell you what's most important. It is literally life and death back home for you. Has that given you a proper perspective, not that you may have needed it, but about football, that in the end, OK, we didn't win the Premier League, but nobody died, right? Where you come from right now, every day people are getting killed. Well, all of us Ukrainians, we, we are praying and we're hoping that um, our victory is not far away. And all of us, you know, I'm talking about the rest of the world, all the people which is helping us and supporting us, uh, we believe that uh, we're gonna we're gonna beat this invasion. That's for sure. You're gonna be a father again soon, and you have a little two-year-old girl. Has having your own ch child and a, another child to come, has that given you something extra when it comes to how you think about this war and what's going on with the young kids back home? Uh, I'll be honest with you, when I'm playing or uh, seeing my daughter smile i'm over the moon i'm straight away forgetting about everything around myself and in the same time i'm just thinking about being a dad i'm just thinking about about the people in there uh, which have exactly the same kids and then some of them been killed for no reason some of them didn't come back home and um, I don't know. It makes me so disappointed. So disappointed. Have, have you wanted to join the fighting yourself? If there will be a time, everyone will be there. If will be the last call or something or, or whatever, if will be a call, we go, all of us, we go. You there. would go? Everyone will go. You would fight for Ukraine? Of course. Of course. But in the same time, I'm just thinking about today... Uh, I'm thinking about that I'm much, much more helpful from here at the moment. But listen, uh, you never know what's going to happen. Maybe, maybe this is the last speech when we're going to speak to each other. You never know. You never know. And um, uh, how many people already been killed by this invasion? I, I'm not seeing myself hiding somewhere. I'm not seeing myself hiding somewhere. Alex, it's, it's been an honour to talk to you. Honestly, thank you for your time. Thank you. I wish you all the best with this game. It's going to be star-studded, lots of great players. Uh, can we have a few names? Gerald Piquet, I think, is playing, and uh, Clarence Seedorf. You, you've got some other friends of yours you've roped in. Robert Perez, I hear. Yeah, well, you said already a lot of names, and um, to be honest, uh, we would like to announce it step by step. Are uh, you looking for a slightly older striker? Are you ready? Are you fit enough? You don't wake up with a body like this without a lot of hard work and effort. Yeah. Alex, I'm okay. ready for the call. Okay, uh, let's speak with our manager. <laughs> let's speak with our manager. Eh? Um, I'm not quite as fast as I used to be, but I'm lethal in the six years. So, Lou, you're area. like me? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> slow slow on, the, on the fish. Um, well, you said already a lot of names, uh, but for sure um, there will be a lot of legends on the pitch and a lot of people which, is, which will be able to watch it from the stadium or even by TV. They're going to have fun. But uh, the main target is, uh, from this match is um, to raise the funds for the, for the, for the school in Chernihiv region mm -hmm. to rebuild it. And um, Obviously, apart from this, this is another powerful message um, to the rest of the world that obviously we stick together, we stay together. Um, 
and all these people from different international uh, nationality i mean different uh, different countries they they stay with us mm -hmm. look the the leaders from different countries brazil or wherever they stay with us so even this is another message to the russian civilians which is still believing and supporting what they do this is another message like okay you can watch your propaganda for 20 years on the same same tv channel and you can believe in this but in the same time in the end of the day, you can just think, well, okay, this is one information, but from the other side, all the world is against us. Maybe they have a reason, or maybe this is, maybe I need to find the, 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 the real truth. So, you never know. Obviously, uh, I lost my hope already, like, long time ago. I'm talking about Russian civilians, that they can do anything. I lost my hope. Uh, I'm not hoping anymore, but uh, still, you never know. When I interviewed your president, we ended it with the words Slava Ukraini. Heroim uh, Slava. Yeah. I wish you all the very best for you and your family. Thank you so much. And to your country. Thank you so much. I think you're going to win. And I think that's going to be a powerful message that dictators can't just invade countries when they feel like it and kill everyone they feel like. And I know rape and pillage win. and do what they want. Actually, they can be held accountable. I know we're going to win, for sure. Alex, thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.